Hey, geography students. We are going to continue our talk about political geography today with the last topic, uh, which is going to be devolution and terrorism. Uh, so we've talked about what makes a state and the history of the states and the different uh, shapes and sizes of them. Um, well, today we're going to talk about what happens if a uh, part of a state wants to break away. And oftentimes uh, what that leads to is our second topic, which is terrorism. All right, so devolution uh, is definition, as you can see there, is for a particular group, either a nationalist or ethnic group um, that wants its own sovereignty. Remember, that means its right to self-govern itself. Um, and usually that means it wants to break away from its current country or current state. Um, this is a common process when uh, the minority groups oftentimes do not feel um, like they are uh, having their voice heard either politically or uh, economically or socially, um, any of those ways. Um, and they oftentimes want to break away uh, from the sovereign state and form their own sovereign state. This oftentimes happens too whenever things are not going well for the state in general. Um, so a couple of examples that you uh, are probably familiar with, the Soviet Union being a, uh, a very uh, common example in world history that people point to. Uh, we know that most of Eastern Europe was part of the Soviet Union, along with the main uh, state, which was Russia. Uh, and the Soviet Union encompassed all of those Eastern European countries. Uh, and after its breakup in 1991, uh, you can see that it broke into several fragmented pieces uh, or, or new states that devolved um, from that original large state of the Soviet Union. Um, and this happened over the a period of time uh, from, as you can see there, 89 to 91, they slowly broke away. And then eventually in 1991, the all that was left was uh, Russia and it dissolved the Soviet Union uh, as a result. And we can see it forming the new countries here in uh, Eastern Europe that we become more familiar with. Uh, and it's going to keep devolving after that as well. Um, Yugoslavia is one of the uh, countries that even later breaks into several more uh, nation states that want their independence as well, uh, instead of being a part of the entire Yugoslavia. Uh, and so these are very common things that happen today. Um, it's happening all the time. The latest example would be South Sudan devolving from uh, the entire country of Sudan that we've talked about in 2011. Uh, and there's many places that uh, are currently seeking devolution uh, from places all over the world. Uh, you know, you might hear about the United Kingdom as being one. We know that the United Kingdom, uh, its main parts would be England here, um, Scotland to the north, uh, you also have Wales to the southwest and also the um, northern part of Ireland or Northern Ireland, which is separate from the Republic of Ireland. Um, and a lot of these um, parts to the United Kingdom uh, want um, and are pushing for devolution and that they want their own sovereignty uh, and break away from uh, the UK. Most notably is Scotland. In the past year, they had a vote. It was very close, um, but they ended up voting no by, I think, like 2%, maybe it was like 52 to 48%, uh, something like that, um, said no to leaving the UK. So it's very close, but you can tell that that shows that there's a lot of animosity between uh, Scotland and, and the rest of the UK, and they, they feel like they should have their own sovereignty. Um, Northern Ireland, very similar uh, respect and um, a lot of this has to do with um, not only um, you know, social differences, but also other types of differences. Uh, it could be economic. A lot of um, people um, in Northern Ireland and Scotland wanted to stay in the EU, but the UK as a whole voted to leave it. So that was an economic uh, development that led to this animosity and this leading to Scotland wanting to devolve from uh, England. And so, um, Scotland felt like they were the minority here in the UK uh, and their voices were not heard and therefore they should have uh, their own government and their own say. And so that's what led to that vote. Um, it didn't happen, but uh, you could very well still see that coming here in the future. Um, Northern Ireland's another example. Um, it's not as um, much in the news now as it was maybe a few years ago, but Northern Ireland uh, wanted to break away from the rest of the UK and uh, it was because 
uh, of a lot of different historic animosity between the two of being subjugated um, and forced to leave their homeland and things like that. Um, and one of the things they turned to, to to start breaking away wasn't a vote or anything like that. They started using uh, a group called the IRA or the Irish Republican Army. Um, and this was a militant terrorist group uh, that carried out terrorist attacks in order to um, influence devolution from the country. And so this is a very common form now, unfortunately, uh, of getting these small minorities getting their way is by through the use of terrorism. Uh, and we're going to take a, a look at a few more examples um, there. Um, you can see some of these uh, in these current threats to devolve, not only the UK, but we, we're going to talk about Catalonia and the Basque regions of Spain. Um, there's parts of Native uh, American groups in Canada uh, that want to devolve as well, especially uh, in the northern um, areas of Canada. Russia, Afghanistan, of course, and Syria is a, a great example of devolution uh, in, that led um, to terrorism in that land. All right, here's a, an interesting political cartoon that kind of helps you understand what devolution is. It's not the big guys um, involved in the state. It's usually a minority group that wants to leave the big state, but they can't. So they oftentimes have to turn to uh, terrorism as a uh, means to um, get their way. All right, a couple of examples of uh, successful and unsuccessful devolution uh, processes. Um, during the colonial time period, um, colonization around the world, the United States breaking away from Great Britain um, in 1776 when we uh, won our independence would be an example of devolution. It's a breaking away from the larger state of Great Britain. Um, same way with uh, India. India was a um, colony of Great Britain. And when they dissolved from the British Empire, uh, they realized that there were several different ethnic groups that wanted uh, their own sovereign state. And they broke into different places because of religious reasons. Um, India um, being mostly Hindu, separated from Pakistan, which is mostly Muslim, uh, and uh, is another example of devolution. We talked about Yugoslavia. You can see that example here in 1989. It broke into different parts, such as Croatia, uh, and then eventually places like Serbia, Montenegro, um, Kosovo, eventually. Uh, you can see all the different countries that devolved in, in their own nation states afterwards. And this is because they felt like they they were not heard. Um, these minority groups wanted their own independent country. And this is a very common thing that's happening more and more around the world. We talked about South Sudan, very common uh, example today, uh, where they gained their independence from the mostly Arab Muslim North. Um, the U.S. had uh, an example of this when the Philippines won their independence. If you, uh, if you know um, in world history, the Philippines used to be a U.S. colony, and eventually they would win their independence from that group. A couple of failed attempts. Uh, Puerto Rico tried to um, re be, remove itself from being annexed by the United States, which it currently is part of the United States territory. Um, but the vote failed. Um, and so we are uh, still seeing the uh, Puerto Ricans move for devolution there. They want more autonomy, more authority. Um, we see the U.S. Civil War uh, would be another attempt at devolution, right? So it's the South trying to break away from uh, the North. Uh, but of course, it was a failed attempt. And you can see some other parts here, Chechnya and Russia. Um, they're still trying. Quebec, mostly French speaking part of Can or not, excuse me, Canada, uh, tried to leave uh, the more English and, and uh, dominant um, uh, parts of Canada that are mostly English speaking. Um, and there are a couple other places that don't even have uh, their own state. Um, a good example would be Palestine. Uh, we talked about the reasons why they're um, a lot, um, but they have um, an autonomous region, uh, more or less, but is not considered a state. It's not recognized by the UN. Uh, same way with the Kurdish population. I'm going to show you a map. Uh, here in a minute of where the Kurdish people live, but they do not have their own state. Uh, and so they're spread out amongst a bunch of different states where they're all the minority. Uh, they're the minority in all of those states and they do not have their own homeland. Uh, the other uh, example that we've also talked about is the Romani people. They're spread out across Europe. They do not have their own country. Um, Romania, I know a lot of people would say that's, that's their homeland. Um, but if you remember back, uh, they actually started off in India as their original homeland. Uh, but they've spread out as migrants across the uh, of Europe and Asia. 
and into Africa uh, and do not have their own permanent state. So there's several different places that have been um, controlled. And you could say that these are forms of um, superimposed boundaries on these people as well. All right, here's an example here of a map of um, India when it split into um, mostly Hindu uh, India and mostly uh, Muslim Pakistan, and then eventually Bangladesh uh, would break away from Pakistan and from their own country as well, uh, also being mostly Muslim in the area. All right, here is a uh, map on this side of the uh, devolution process from the Ottoman Empire originally uh, and um, how it balkanized is sometimes the, the term used there because this region is called the Balkans into several other um, different parts, different smaller nation states as a result. So I'll let it finish playing out here, but you can see how it eventually breaks up the Yugoslavia into the countries that we know today as Croatia and Albania, and Macedonia, and eventually um, Montenegro and Serbia and Kosovo finally. All right, here is where the Kurdish population lives. Notice it's parts of Turkey um, where they are not well liked in really any of these uh, lands. Um, they are the minority group, oftentimes seen as um, cast outs. Uh, they, they don't get along well with the Turks. They don't get along well with Syrians or Iraqis or Iranians. Um, and so the Kurdish population has been oftentimes uh, subjugated to um, relative obscurity in the political area. They don't get much political voice in any of these populations. So a lot of people say uh, that there should be a Kurdistan or a Kurdis, Kurdish state um, that gives these people a homeland. But the problem with that is, as you might imagine, you'd have to take land away from these countries that do not want to do that. So right now, their main uh, force that they're trying to do is they have a civil war going on in Syria, as you know, with ISIS and the current state. But one of the other factors is the Kurds are kind of try to carve out a piece of Syria to form Kurdistan, what they want to uh, make their own country out of the civil war going on in uh, Syria. And so that's a big part of that civil war. And it's very uh, messy situation there as well. But they are an example of a stateless nation. They don't have their own country. All right. Finally, um, I talked about this. This is a common form uh, of a means to get what they want um, as far as the minority groups that want devolution and break away from the larger state. Um, and we're seeing this more and more today. Um, what we're seeing is not only terrorism uh, to, for devolution purposes, but also uh, for political gains. When countries that know they can't fight a large scale war against uh, the larger powers, such as the US, oftentimes what they turn to is terrorism. Um, it's relatively cheap. Um, it's easy to carry out. Uh, as long as you have a, um, a group of people that are dedicated to the cause. Um, their main means of doing this are um, the ones they see here, different bombings. Uh, we know about different uh, types of cyber terrorism today. Um, it, at the end of the day, all of the different types that you see here are ways to incite violence, or excuse me, uh, incite fear through violence um, and to intimidate people uh, into doing what they want. Uh, to give in to their demands. Anything that does that is uh, what we classify as terrorism. And this can be either individual, uh, carried out by single groups, or um, you know, it can be state-sponsored. It's individual terrorism. One of some of the main uh, guys that we talked about already was the Irish Republican Army in Ireland, uh, but some of the others that you're probably familiar with, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, the Taliban, Hamas, uh, those are other examples of terrorist groups uh, that are small groups that are not necessarily affiliated with any particular country, uh, but there are a group of people that use terrorism to get um, their political goals accomplished. Okay. Um, and then finally, we have state-sponsored terrorism. That's just when an entire country uh, sponsors, as you might imagine, um, or, or promotes the group or allows them to operate in their country or doesn't do anything to stop uh, the group in their country or protects them in any way. They direct them to do certain things for them. So, for example, um, in Afghanistan, the reason why the U.S. went to war in Afghanistan is because Afghanistan's government directed, um, based on the intelligence that the U.S. got, the 9-11 um, attacks on New York City. Uh, and so they basically not only protected the Taliban uh, and Osama bin Laden, but also used him um, and directed him as to how to carry out the attack. And so 
because of that intelligence, uh, the U.S. decided it was time to invade Afghanistan and get rid of the current government because it was a state sponsor of terrorism. Um, and in a lot of ways, the same thing happened in Iraq, um, where they believed that uh, you know, the Taliban also um, was used along with Al Qaeda, um, was sponsored by Saddam Hussein. Um, and so because those governments were pro-terrorist group, uh, the U.S. felt like it was their duty to step in and end terrorism in those places. And we know those wars are still going on today. Um, trying to fight these groups is very tough because uh, they are these small groups that don't necessarily have, um, you know, a, a normal battlefield strategy where you're not going to fight them on a level playing field. They're the guerrilla warfare terrorist type of attacks. And so that's very difficult to, to really stop today. And so we're constantly trying to um, fight this battle. And it's hard to understand sometimes how exactly the best way it is to stop it. But those are some of the main ways in which uh, devolution and terrorism are um, creating problems in our society today.